What I started in the final days of 2020 is finally finished. I would like to show to you all my BR-55 battle rifle. Now, in case the intro video did not make it clear, this is not a prop, nor is it a toy. This is a bespoke rifle built from the ground up to be a perfect replica of the BR-55 battle rifle from Halo 2. The rifle is constructed from a variety of materials, aluminum being first and foremost. Steel, nylon, and a few other 3D printed components make up the rest. As I mentioned before, this rifle has taken years of work, and it fills me with so much joy to finally be able to show it to you all. Okay, so before I get into the features and functions of this rifle, I think it's important to give you guys a little bit of a backstory, both on myself and this whole project. I am not an engineer at all. The extent of my engineering knowledge is that I used to play with a lot of LEGO as a kid growing up. If any real engineer saw my workflow, they would probably have an aneurysm. I'm also not a machinist. I am a 3D artist. I used to work in games. I used to create assets for indie games mostly, but that's more or less what I did. The game industry didn't really pan out for me, and I'm thankful for that. I started up a prototyping business by accident while working as a 3D artist, and that's been my bread and butter ever since. I really love it, it's a lot of fun, and I wouldn't trade it for the world. That business, along with my own love of making things, is really what spawned this. Early on, I had not planned on doing something this grand. I had planned on doing a furniture kit, a stock, a foregrip, and a carry handle. I still have the file, actually, in Fusion 360, and I think it's called AR-55. The reason why I never finished that project was because I wasn't content with just dressing up a gun. So my business gave me the tools I needed to really start working on something like this. Now, there were still holes in my knowledge of how to do something like this, and I filled those holes in the only way that I really knew how. YouTube. Everything that I needed to know was on YouTube in some way, shape, or form. For instance, machining. I binged countless machining channels over the years, and one of my favorites, for instance, was this old Tony. To this day, I still watch his content. It's very entertaining, very family friendly, and really just, you gain a lot of knowledge from watching him. That being said, machining was only part of it because there are some parts on here that are quite complex and I just don't have the means to machine them. Another awesome channel that I uh, stumbled across in my pursuit of knowledge was called Robinson Foundry and they have some awesome tutorials and methods of how to turn 3D prints into cast metal parts. And for something that's ornamental, that's great. If, as long as it's not bearing pressure, there's nothing wrong with the cast part. You can get some really high quality finishes too if you use a ceramic shell uh, during your casting process. But that's neither here nor there. I'm not going to give you guys a list of every single channel that I watch and every single tutorial that I followed. Suffice to say, I learned a lot over the past four years on how to make something like this. And it's all online. So now you guys have a little bit more information on this rifle, myself, how I got the skills to make something like this. But there's one final thing I want to address before moving on. Unfortunately, you guys will not be getting any sort of detailed breakdown or assembly of this rifle. And the reason for that is simple. It is YouTube's terms of service. They do not like firearms content. YouTube is not a friendly place for firearms content. If you need proof of this, go ask Ian from Forgotten Weapons. His content is 100% educational, and even he gets restrictions on what he can post. So, with all of those disclaimers out of the way, how about we start actually looking at this thing? It is chambered in 5.56 and uses standard AR mags. These are 10 round magazines, and the reason being is because anything larger sticks at the bottom. It actually starts looking kind of like an FS2000, funnily enough. So why did I go with 5.56 over anything else? And the reason is simple. I tried. I tried 308. I tried 5.7. I tried almost every caliber under the sun. I kept coming back to 5.56, and let me tell you why. In the official lore, the BR-55HB, which is the long-barreled version of this rifle, shoots the 9.5 by 40 cartridge. That's actually very similar to 7.62 by 39. So why didn't I go with that? Well, the reason is kind of simple. Despite this being entirely handmade and not a dressed-up rifle, I do use a few off-the-shelf parts, one of those being a barrel, the other of which is the bolt. Because of the space constraints, I needed a rifle length gas system, something with the gas block way out front so that it could fit under here. 
there's just not enough room back in this area for a gas block to sit. For those of you who do not know, 762 by 39 uses a relatively short gas system, almost like 300 Blackout does. So I could not find an off-the-shelf barrel that was 20 inches or greater that had a rifle length gas system. In fact, I couldn't find a single 762 by 39 barrel that had a rifle length gas system. All of them were mid-length at best. I could have had a custom one made, but that kind of threw into question how well would it cycle, stuff like that. I did consider 6.5 Brendel and 6.8 Special as well, but I opted against those for different reasons. And those reasons were the cost of ammo and the availability of the ammo. I want to be able to shoot this thing for the next 20 years, Lord willing. And as cool as 6.5 and 6.8 are, they are expensive and I don't know how long they are going to be around. I never want to have to deal with ammo shortages with this thing any more than I already do with 5.56 anyways. I did play around with a few oddballs like 350 Legend and such to try to get a larger bullet coming out, but in the end 5.56 just kept winning. So, some of you might be asking, why stick with an intermediate cartridge? Why not go up to a 308? And again, I did try that. There are so many size constraints when dealing with this thing. Not only do I have to deal with the back and forth, the uh, lateral motion of the bolt in space, I have to deal with the side to side. The BR-55, for as chunky as it is, is actually quite a thin rifle. In fact, let me compare it with an FN FS2000. You're going to see just how thin this rifle is. As you can see, the FS2000 is quite a fair bit thicker. Because of that thinness, I couldn't do anything like a quad stack magazine or anything like that. And at best, I could fit six to eight rounds of 308. And that just wasn't satisfying enough for me. 10 rounds of 556 was pushing it. I wasn't going to settle for anything less than that. So I mentioned before that the lateral space behind the bolt was really pushing it, even for 5.56. 308 would be almost entirely out of the question. There's a hammer back here, it needs, it needs room to cycle back far enough to pick up the next bolt. Could it be done? Yes, absolutely. I don't doubt that for a moment. But there were just too many compromises that I did not like. So all things considered, I'm pretty happy with going with 5.56. It is an intermediate cartridge. It sounds cool, ammo isn't too expensive, and I, know, and I know I'm going to be able to find it for a very long time going forward. That being said, I've mentioned several times now the space back here. What exactly is this? Well, this is a really cool product from a company called Evolution's Weapon System. Now, I know the idea of a buffer tubeless AR is a little bit more widespread now, but back in 2020, it was a little bit more far-fetched. There was one company out there, like I said, Evolution Weapon System, that was producing a buffer tubeless AR, or at least in concept, it was up for a pre-order. Now, up until that point, I had been designing my own custom bolt carrier group. It was quite the mix, let's put it that way. It had an AK piston, a custom gas block, a G36 return spring, and it used an AR bolt to interface with the AR-15 barrel. Would that have worked? Yeah, I'm pretty confident it would have. But it would have been a lot of tweaking, a lot of money, and a lot of time. An off-the-shelf solution like this was much preferable. That being said, here's where things get a little bit complicated. Back in 2020, I reached out to EWS asking when these would be for sale. And the pre-orders were up. They told me they were they told me if I ordered now, I should get one in three to six weeks. And I thought, sweet, that's great. Um, but could I possibly have some dimension so I can start designing around this? And they were gracious enough to actually give me those, which I am very thankful for even to this day. The problem is when eight weeks passed, and then 12 weeks passed, and then 32 weeks passed, and then a year passed, and this just kept going and going. And it took about two years for me to finally get my hands on one of the bolt carriers that I had designed this thing around. And I didn't even get it from them. I got it from a fellow YouTuber who happened to have a few and he was willing to sell me one for a markup. I am very grateful that he was willing to do that because that let me actually test this thing for the first time. Eventually EWS did get me my bolt carriers. I have three in total. In fact, 
The reason why I built three of these and will probably never build another is because I don't think I'm ever going to be able to get another EWS bolt carrier group. If they have solved their production issues and they have fixed their shipping times, I would highly recommend their product. The people I talked to at EWS were so nice and they were very understanding and sympathetic. And I don't fault them personally for what happened. It was peak COVID and a bunch of other things. That being said, if their shipping times have been solved, definitely check them out because it really is a cool system. Okay, so now you guys have an idea of why I went with the caliber I did and also why I went with the system that I did. And some of you might be thinking, that's looking kind of like a dressed up AR at this point. I thought you said this wasn't a dressed up rifle. And yeah, you are right. I did use a few off the shelf parts. And those parts are the barrel and the bolt carrier group. The reason for that is simple. I did not want to make a bomb. Those are the pressure bearing components. Those are the parts that can get dangerous if you mess up. And I was not willing to take that risk. I've seen enough guns blow up on YouTube to know I did not want that happening to me. That aside, the rest is completely bespoke. Speaking of bespoke though, let's talk a little bit more about this magazine because I could not live with myself if the ammo counter did not work. The magazine itself has three pins in it and those pins interface with the rifle. As a result, the rifle and magazine actually talk to each other. Within the magazine itself is a potentiometer. That potentiometer is pressed on by a detent embedded within the follower. The, the follower can only really be in one of a few positions when it's loaded up with any amount of rounds. As a result, the onboard computer knows exactly where the follower is. Now that's really important to know because the position of the follower is basically a constant when it comes to loading up rounds. It's always going to be in the same position whether it's at two, three, four, five, or six rounds. When it is at six rounds, that follower will be in the same exact position. By mapping the position of the follower onto a chart, I'm able to determine how many rounds are in the magazine. This is really cool because it means I can partially load up a magazine, insert it, and get an accurate ammo read. A lot of ammo counters will assume you loaded up a full magazine. Not all, but a lot. I wanted to make sure that this was a versatile system. All that being said, there were still a few problems. And those problems are kind of of my own making. I mentioned before, this is a 10 round magazine and we went over why that is 10 rounds. But the battle rifle holds 36 rounds in game. And there is almost nothing more satisfying than picking up a battle rifle and seeing that glorious 36. You see that 36 and you know you are ready to rock and roll. So how do I get to have my cake and eat it too? Because 36 is not divisible by 10 in any way. Let me show you what I came up with. When you load up 10 rounds and insert it into the rifle, the follower is pushed down as far as it's ever going to go. I have mapped that to read 36 when you have a 10 round magazine inserted and have not cycled the weapon. When you cycle the weapon, the magazine counter now reads 30. Why 30? Well, while 36 is not divisible by 10, 30 is. 30 divided by 10 is three. The battle rifle happens to shoot a three round burst. You know what that means? Yeah, it's not actually burst fire, but I get to pretend it is. Every single shot that you take subtracts three from the ammo counter. This will continue until it reaches zero, in which case it will display double zeros. Now, some might find this a bit confusing, but if you've ever actually played the game, you have a general idea of how much ammo you have left based on what this is telling you. So if you see 12, you know you have four shots left. Is it a little tacky? Maybe. Do I enjoy it? Oh, absolutely. There is almost nothing more satisfying than watching that ammo counter tick down from 30 to zero. So that's been a somewhat brief overview of this rifle. This video is starting to get kind of long, so I'll be cutting it off here. That being said, I definitely intend to be making a follow-up video at some point. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments. I will do my best to answer them going forward. One final thing that I did want to say is, this entire project has been that of compromise. And let me explain what I mean by that. 
There is always going to be compromise when you do something like this. The caliber, the capacity, the looks. It takes about two hours to assemble one of these. And the reason being is because I did not want to compromise on the aesthetic of the rifle. This is almost like a puzzle inside. It goes together in a very specific order. And as a result, I'm able to hide a lot of screws, bolts, etc., that keep this thing in one piece. And that kind of is the point I'm making here. The weapon artists at Bungie and 343, respectively, they did a pretty good job of making a rifle that looks like it could really function because it can. It's just the small details like the ammo, the capacity, etc., that they have to tweak to make the game more fun. And those are the attributes that you have to figure out. Do you want a high ammo capacity? Well, you're going to have to sacrifice the looks a little bit. And that was the big question for me. Did I want a super ergonomic rifle with high capacity, nice controls, etc., Or did I want something that really looked the part? Something that looked like it had been used during the Battle of Installation 05? Well, this should make it obvious which one I wanted. I have dozens of other rifles that are perfectly capable of being a fighting rifle, of being a hunting rifle, etc. This fills a hole in my arsenal that nothing else can and nothing else will. And that's why to me, this rifle is priceless. I can put a dollar amount to the materials spent, services, stuff like that, but I can't put a dollar amount to my time that I spent on it or what it does for my arsenal. It's just too special. I'm glad that I'm finally able to show you all what I've been working on. It has been a truly joyous, if not arduous journey to get here. I couldn't have done this without my friends, Pat, Vitor, Jay, June. You guys are all awesome. Thank you so much for putting up with me as I send you countless works and progresses where you don't really see what's going on, but you know I'm doing something. I also have the Lord to thank for giving me both the means and the perseverance to see this project through. I cannot even begin to stress how much work went into this. I wanted to quit on so many occasions, but I kept going and going, and now it's finally done. Lastly, my mom and dad, they are absolute saints. They put up with my insanity when nobody else will. And I can't thank you guys enough. You all are just so awesome. If you're still watching, I want to thank you for sticking through all the way to the end. I know this was a pretty long video and it means the world to me that you actually thought it was worth watching. So before truly ending this video, there are a couple things that I want to make clear, um, preemptively answer some questions. I've already made it clear that I am not producing these and selling them. It's just too much work. I don't feel like going through the paperwork of getting an FFL. So some of you might be asking, will I release the source files? Because they clearly must exist. And unfortunately, the answer is no. And the only reason why I say no is legal. There's a few reasons why legally I do not want to release these source files. First and foremost, there is the liability. All it takes is one person using my files, getting hurt, and I open myself up to a lawsuit. Even if I win the lawsuit, it is so much time, money, etc., that I do not feel like spending. Secondly, and this one actually might even be more important, the battle rifle is not my design. Microsoft and 343 are the ones who own the design of the battle rifle. And as cool as it would be to see an army of people running around with these, I don't think Microsoft would appreciate that. What I'm doing here is 100% legal, but I don't feel like fighting Microsoft's legal department if they don't like what I'm doing. So I'm going to lay low and just entertain myself. That being said, like I mentioned before, none of this is magic. You are 100% capable of doing this yourself. If it's legal where you live, I do not want you getting in trouble and blaming me. Check your laws. But yeah, firearms are not magic. Small arms peaked in the 50s and we are kind of just rehashing 
what they've, what they've done since then. If you're interested in doing something like this, start learning. Start figuring out how to do it. Some might tell you it's not worth it or you're crazy, but I'm telling you right now, if you're not, stick with it. You will be so glad you did.